Hi everyone, welcome to Fat Porch 5. I'm glad you're here. We design and build fun and unusual things and we always learn something new along the way. We're gonna start a new project today, a self-contained mint tin drawing robot. And yeah, I'm uh, not quite sure how to put this all together. There's a lot of challenges to solve, but basically we want to build some kind of a robot inside of Mint Tin where when the user opens it up, it just automatically starts drawing a picture or uh, a, some kind of graphic or even a business card. Now, what we want to do inside this tin is have it draw on a standard business sized piece of paper. One problem, this regular old mint tin that I got, it's just about the size of a business card. And so this is too small, it's not gonna work. But I found another one that's a little bit bigger. So it looks like this. And it'll hold a business card about like that. I think that'll work better. So we are going to see if we can accomplish this. A lot to solve, a lot to figure out. I think you'll enjoy it, let's get started. Forge 5. All right, so before we start, I want to thank our two boys, Jack and Alex, for always helping me so much with these projects. They do a lot behind the scenes to help me figure out all kinds of challenges. They inspire me. They give me ideas. Uh, they help me with coding, math, etc. So thanks, Jack and Alex. I appreciate all you do to make these, uh, these projects and these videos possible. It's always great. So um, here's our mint tin. We need to basically build our own little self-contained CNC machine inside this thing. I want it battery powered. I don't want it to have an external computer. I want it to do everything it needs inside this tin. And as I showed you, here's our piece of paper. It'll fit in the top. So it looks like if we're really careful with our design work, we can make everything fit. But how to make a CNC machine work all by itself without a computer uh, I'm not totally sure yet, so let's get started. We'll see if we can figure it out. We'll start by doing a 3D design in Fusion 360. We'll see if we can figure out the sizes of things and see how we can lay them out and if it will even fit inside this thing, and then we'll go from there. All right, let's go. I got some inspiration by a great product from Michelangelo. I'll put a link to their website in the description below. It fits on a giant whiteboard and draws plots. There's also a great instructable by Aditya Ranjan. Aditya took the Michelangelo open source product and code and helped it run on a nice, simple Arduino, which is what I need for this project. So take a look at that instructable. I'll put a link to the description below as well. It's fantastic. The Michelangelo system is made to hang on a big wall or a whiteboard and hang vertically so it plots vertically so it has stepper motors in the upper left upper right it's got a carriage with some kind of marker in it and then it's got belts which connect to that carriage to move it back and forth now it also has some longer belts with some weights on it and those weights pull everything and keep everything in tension using gravity, of course. And then the carriage itself has its own weight, which pulls it down. So that keeps all the belts nice and tight. Our system won't have that because we won't be hanging on a wall. We'll be, you know, in any orientation, probably just horizontal. So we won't have the advantage of using gravity and weights. We need to do something different. So we'll use some tension pulleys at the bottom. What we'll do is add two more belts We'll put them under tension with the spring, so they're always pulling down and away like that, and that'll pull the carriage down. That'll take the place of gravity. That'll keep everything under tension and working just right. So we have to figure out how to build this tension system. So here's those belts pulling down. They'll pull like this and pull the carriage down like this. So we'll make sure that everything's always nice and in tension and tight for us. Now, how do we figure out how long our belt should be each time we move to a certain point? Well, imagine a point like this. It has an X and a Y coordinate, just like this. 
Now we instead have our stepper motors with our pulleys in the upper left and upper right. So we'll draw one here on the left side. And we've got our two belts like this. The question is how long should those belts be to move to that point in an X and Y coordinate? Well, we just have a triangle here. So we have A, B, and C sides. And we know some algebra math, trigonometry, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we can solve for that and figure out the length C. Now, since we know the diameter of our pulley and its circumference, we can figure out exactly how many turns our pulley needs to make to create a length of C. That's pretty straightforward. You always have to figure out now which way to turn. Do we reel in or reel out? But that's just a bit of math and we can do that with our Arduino. So now I know our basic design. Let's pop over to Fusion 360 and take a look at what it actually looks like in 3D. All right, let's take a look at our design in Fusion 360. So here's what it looks like. This is the entire assembly all put together. I'll kind of break it apart and let you see what it's all about. It all fits inside the mint tin like this. So let's start by looking at just the base that I designed. So the base looks like this. It's kind of complicated. Everything connects to the base or slides into it. And so this will be a 3D printed part. Um, and then if you look at where things fit, uh, for example, here's the battery holder. This holds four AAA batteries. And yeah, I could use rechargeable batteries somehow, but um, sometimes rechargeable batteries are just overrated. I just kind of like, you know, good old fashioned batteries. Sometimes it makes it easy for a user to change them and uh, you don't have to have a separate charging port, etc. So that's why I like that. This will all be managed by a little Arduino, a Pro Mini. It fits right there. And then we've got our two kind of special stepper motors. There's one here and one here. These are mock lift stepper motors. They have a 50 to 1 gear ratio between the stepper and the actual shaft here. Um, I think they'll work pretty well. And I really had to find something that basically fit the footprint that I needed. And these were it. They were kind of hard to find too, but we'll see how that goes. Um, here's our servo. So our servo slides into the base right here. And the servo will move up the lever arm up and down. And that's what will move our pencil lead up and down to make it not draw where we don't want to. So we'll see a little bit more about that in a minute. And then we've got some pulleys that sit on top of our steppers that look like this. I think I'll print those out of uh, some flex filament so they're kind of rubberized. Um, now we've got to have some tensioner pulleys here. And you'll see why we use those in a bit. But they, they take the place of having gravity help us here if we had this thing always you know, on a, on a vertical orientation. You'll see why in a second here. And then uh, we need to have something to drive our stepper motors. And so we could use the great Adafruit motor shield that looks like this. These have been around for a while. They work fantastic. They drive steppers, uh, servos, regular motors, etc. But look how big this thing is. It just totally blows away any room we would have for anything else. So I can't use that. But what I realized is um, Adafruit has this great little feather stepper motor. These are made for their Feather microcontroller series, but they'll also connect to an Arduino. And so this is nice and small, and it will run two stepper motors for us with these four connections on each side. So that's gonna be fantastic, and it still fits in our overall footprint. So basically, the uh, stepper driver and the Arduino kind of stack on top of each other here in a way. And then we need, um, what else? Our pulley here for our, our little spring. Um, we have a spiral spring right here. So this is what provides the tension that pulls our little shuttle down. I'll show you the shuttle. The shuttle is what will actually move as we move our stepper motors. It'll hold a little piece of pencil lead right in the middle here. And this whole assembly will move around our little drawing board. 
and so it's held in place by a couple of belts like this. So here's a top view of the overall system. So here are our stepper motor drivers here with our pulleys and here's our tensioner system. I have to have some tension on this tensioner pulley here and that's what this spiral spring is for. I looked around and tried to figure out a way to buy one of these and I finally decided I could just 3D print one. So I designed one in Fusion 360, we'll 3D print it and it's a spiral spring. The trick about a spiral spring is it has constant tension force no matter how much you compress it, I think. And so that's important because we want to be able to, you know, have it move over a wide range, but not suddenly get tighter and tighter and tighter. So I think this design will work pretty well. Um, we're going to connect this with a little belt over to this pulley here and then that pulley connects to the pulley up above. Um, what else do we have here? We've got a little screw holding down this here. And then the trick with steppers versus servos is that stepper motors have no idea of what their actual position is. They don't have any feedback in that respect. A servo, which is here, has a nice little feedback system in it. And even if you turn a servo off and turn it back on, that feedback signal will tell a controller, like an Arduino, exactly the position of the servo. That's always fantastic. Stepper motors don't have that. And so unless you build a separate feedback mechanism for a stepper motor, it really doesn't ever understand what its position is. And so for that, we have to have a little homing system. And so we'll add some lever switches. Uh, oh, by the way, here's a lever switch that turns it on. When you open up the top of the mint tin, this lever switch pops up and turns the whole system on. And then we've got a couple of lever switches here and here. So these switches are called limit switches. These are really common when you use stepper motors. So as the stepper motor homes, it will reel in this pulley and that and, and yeah, reel in this pulley. It'll pull everything over to the right. So it'll move this whole assembly up and this line will move this direction and press against this lever switch. That'll tell it that it's pulled it tight this way. Once it's done that, it will start reeling it over here to the left and move the whole shuttle to the left until it presses this limit switch. So then it'll know it's at its home position with these two lever switches. So that's how it'll figure out its position each time it gets turned on. We hope that should work, we'll see. Um, and then we've got our top here, which is, uh, where is that? I'll call it our backboard, which sits right here on top of everything. Our shuttle, of course, sits on top of that. And uh, that's about it. So pretty complicated little package here. I made some room to have access to the Arduino's programming port on the bottom. I will most likely need to use that during debugging. Uh, oh, the Z slide. So here is a Z slide. So that moves up and down by the servo. So the servo arm spins up and down. This overall Z slide moves up and down. And that is what moves all of our little brass sleeves and brass axles and brass pins, which I'll make out of uh, little brass tubing, basically. So that moves up and down and that causes this line to move up and down, which moves the shuttle up and down. So hopefully when the shuttle's moving and we don't want it to be drawing on the paper, the Z slide will move up. It'll move the shuttle up enough that it will raise the lead from the paper and have it not be drawing, if that makes sense. So kind of complicated. Basically, I used all the real estate I could, both horizontally and vertically, to stack things up and make them fit inside the tin. Um, got a bunch of little, you know, brass sleeves and brass pins here to make things move up and down. I really like this little brass tubing. It's pretty easy to work with and you'll see about that in a bit. So this is the design. This is um, version 28 of this design. So yeah, I've gone through a lot of iterations on it, but I think I have figured everything out. So let's print this thing up put it together, we'll give it a try, and we'll see if it works.
give you a sense of how many versions I've worked on with this prototype. Here's the number of different bases I've 3D printed. Somewhere in here I had one that fit a Raspberry Pi Zero, so I thought I would have to use a Raspberry Pi to uh, run the G-code. That turned out to not be necessary. Then I realized I could use an SD card, so I added an SD card holder. But anyway, these are all just um, 3D prints that I don't need. I'm not going to say they're wasted because I definitely along the way figured out how things should work. But even though I spent a lot of time designing this in 3D in Fusion 360 and put a lot of thought into it, almost always when I would 3D print it, I'd find some little thing that should be changed. So don't feel bad if that's what you do too. It just takes a lot of work and sometimes you just have to see something in, in real life to know whether it'll work or not. All right, now we need to cut out all of our little brass parts. I printed out a drawing from Fusion 360 with the dimensions so I could see how big to make them. Then I'll use a Dremel with a nice little cutoff wheel to cut them off. I found that's just the best and fastest way. So let's take a look at how that looks. All right, got our pieces cut out, both the sleeves and the, uh, the axles. Put them together like this, and I think they'll work pretty well. So I'm happy with that. So let's take a quick survey of all the parts we have. I've 3D printed all the parts, the, uh, the pulleys, the top, the bottom, the spring. We have our brass parts. That's our Z slide. It moves up and down with the servo to lift our pencil lid from the paper. And this is what the small stepper motor looks like. It's a geared motor. It fits in the upper left and upper right corners. And then this is what the parts look like inside. So there's our stepper motor driver. We've got our Arduino Pro Mini. Got our SD card reader, got our limit switches. They're a little hard to push, but we'll see if that works. And then right now I'm powering it with a six volt power supply. Then we've got our servo that will lift our pencil lead from the paper. So let's put our AAA battery holder onto the top. I'll show you how that mounts. It just screws in. And now uh, let's insert our servo. I always design things just to be press fit. I just, I like to save on fasteners and it just saves time. So we've got our servo with our little servo horn. The servo horn has been properly positioned for the right angles. Now it presses in and it sits right down against the bottom. Just like this. Here's our Z slide we've put together. And our little brass sleeves sit on their little slides and axles. And you'll kind of get an idea here. So when that servo horn moves, it should lift the Z slide up and down. Our tension belts at the bottom are really important. They hold the pencil lead down against the paper. So we'll use a spring that I 3D printed to provide that tension. Now that spring mounts into the base like this. It's got a little cord and that wraps around a pulley. And that pulley gets turned by the tension belt above the, the top kind of see how that works. Now the reason I use a spiral spring, it should be a constant tension spring no matter how far it's pulled. I think that's how spiral springs work. So let's go ahead and uh, take a quick look at our Z slide and how it fits. We've got it all put together. That looks like this. 
and it's got a little spring here to pull it back down. So I'm testing it here back and forth. You can see the servo horn lifting up and down and it seems to be working. It's sliding up and down. So when it's up, it should lift our little carriage or shuttle just enough that the pencil head comes off the paper. Now we're ready to put everything together. So now we've got all our electronics. We've got our SD card holder. This just holds a little micro mini SD card. That's where our G code will go for the type of uh, you know plot or art we want to draw. It mounts right into the base with a single screw. And that SD card will be accessible underneath the, uh, the top. So you can reach inside there and push it, pull it out, reprogram it, pop it back in. Easy. Here's our Arduino Pro Mini. It just glues on to the bottom and it's accessible at the bottom, the programming port, if I have to make code changes and I'm certain I'll have to make code changes while I'm trying this thing out. So let's put this all together. Here's how it's starting to fit. We've got the motors mounted onto the base like this. And let's give it a little try here. So we just want to make sure that the stepper motors spin, the limit switches work. They seem to. And it looks like that. All right, so now we've got the motor driver all mounted down. We've got our open switch set up. All right, so here's our completed assembly here. We've got our little drive belts here. So this is the tensioner that you've seen before. These are the drive belts that go to the stepper pulleys. Here are our little you know, lever switches here to home it. And this is the power switch that turns on when you open up the lid of the mint tin. So um, let's give this a try. So just in case to keep it from breaking itself, I'm going to be ready to push that switch if I need to. And uh, then it'll move over this way. And I can kind of tell already, I don't think the shuttle is going to be able to reach this switch. I think I have to move this switch down. So we'll try it. We'll see how it works. But I'm standing by to push the switches manually with my trusty screwdriver. And, um, and then we'll see what happens. So what we should see happen here is it'll try to home itself. It'll move up here, try to click this, try to click this, then it'll move down to some center position once it thinks it knows where it is. So let's try it. Um, I don't have batteries in it right now. I'm using my trusty power supply. So let me turn on the power supply for the six volts. And we'll type in our G28 command, which is, uh, oh, and by the way, right now, I have this connected to my computer to use serial commands with the Arduino, just so I can debug it. But once I've got it all figured out, I'll make it totally autonomous so it doesn't need a computer because that would be kind of crazy to have to do that for a nice portable plotter. Okay, so we'll type in our G28, which is the homing command. And there we go. So it's moving up, which is cool, but I can already tell it's not gonna push that. So there, I pushed it. Now it's moving to the left. It's not gonna reach this, so I'll push this guy too. So now it thinks it's home, and now it's moving itself over to where it thinks the center is. So, kind of wacky. Didn't totally work, of course, for the first try, but that's okay, we'll get this figured out. So, I can tell what I need to do. This limit switch, I gotta move it down and probably angle it more like this so that force will work better on it. And then this guy, I probably gotta move that down and probably keep it the same orientation because the side of this will push against that. But I think I gotta move it down. So version number 29 probably. So let's do a quick redesign in Fusion 360, then we'll give it a shot. All right, let's give this a try. So we've got our device all set up. I've got it powered right now from my six volt power supply. Uh, don't have the batteries in it yet. And I've got it connected to my uh, laptop to do some debugging, but otherwise it's self-sufficient. So I put in the new limit switch right here. It's got the regular old double switch right here. 
So let's try homing it and see how that works. And then we'll try drawing out a square. So it's homing to the right. And it's going to home to the left. These are under tension, which is good. All right, it homed itself to the left. Now it should just return itself right to the center. And there we go. So now let's try putting out a square. So it's going to be a square that's 30 millimeters on a side. All right, I sped this up so we can see exactly where it's moving. Now remember, it should be drawing a square. And I'm watching this thing go back and forth, and it's not drawing a square. It's not even close. So you can see that mechanically things are moving okay. It seems to be under tension like it should be. The belts aren't slipping and the motors are turning, but it's just drawing a gigantic mess. So this is a code issue, not a mechanical issue. And yeah, that's fixable in code. Doesn't mean it's easier, but it's something that we can take a look at. So back to the drawing board with the code. All right, I think I fixed the code, so it should draw a square now. So now we'll try with a piece of paper with pencil lead, and we'll see if it actually draws. Now, what I realized in doing this is that, yeah, it's moving in a square, that's correct, but the pencil lead is not drawing on the paper. It's just not pushing down hard enough. So, even though the Z slide is moving up and down like it should, it's not drawing anything. We need more pressure. That's going to be a problem, so we'll have to figure that out. Back to the drawing board again. All right, we'll stop there. We'll uh, pick up next time. We'll see if we can get this thing all figured out and put together and drawing a picture for us. Thanks for watching. I always appreciate everyone. Uh, send me some comments. Give me some inspiration, some ideas. How would you approach this? What did I miss? What might I want to try? I would love to see that. And please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. It means a lot to me. And uh, until we meet again, uh, take good care of each other, and I'll see you next time.